Hi, this is Dave Habib from Groundwire, and I'm here to give you a demonstration of our new version of Auctions for Salesforce. You can find it on the App Exchange, and before you install it, I want to make sure to call out that you should probably see our installation and configuration guide. This will help make sure that you uh, get it installed correctly in your Salesforce instance. Once you install Auctions, you'll find that you get a new application on the application dropdown called Auctions and you'll see that we uh, install a set of new tabs and we've got uh, several new custom objects that come along with our package. Uh, an auction is a custom object and auction items. The other tabs you see here are actually using opportunities to uh, store things like donations and ticket purchases and purchases of items at the auction. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at an auction you see there's not too much information about the auction itself, just its date, uh, what is the ticket fair market value, you know, if you're providing a meal at your auction. And you'll see that when you create an auction, the system will automatically create four new campaigns. And we use these campaigns to track uh, various pieces of information. So we've got one that keeps track of all of the item donors, the people who are actually giving you goods to sell at your auction. We've got another campaign where you can track sponsors. This could be uh, corporations where you're kind of going through a, a normal gift or grant processing cycle and you could track it on this one campaign. We've got one that tracks all of the uh, ticket purchases and then a final campaign that keeps track of all of the attendees, the people who have been invited, who have bought tickets, who are guests, um, and who will be showing up at your auction. One key concept with auctions is understanding that we support uh, both the donated items that come in from donors as well as the items that you're actually going to sell. Frequently these are the same things but sometimes you may package up a bunch of stuff that people give you into let's say gift baskets that you sell. So our system handles uh, both of those scenarios. So let's go ahead and look at our first tab, which is auction donated items. In version 3.0, we've improved the, uh, the listing of all the objects that are used on all these tabs to support uh, sorting and filtering and deletions. So that should be a nice feature that should make it easier to, to deal with lots of items. So your auction donated items <coughs> are the uh, goods that people donate to your organization to auction off. It could be a, a single item like, let's say, a baseball jersey, or it could be an item like, let's say, a case of wine where you're actually going to split it up and maybe sell multiple wine and cheese baskets. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these items. You can see that donated items are an opportunity of uh, an auction record type, and we've got various pieces of information about it like uh, you know what's the name of the item uh, have we received it yet or not uh, obviously since it's using opportunities you can go through the normal stage business rule process to uh, keep track of those prospective donations versus the ones you've actually closed uh, and you're able to of course specify the the fair market value and how many items you have and as we begin to use these items uh, the system will keep track of how many you've used. So let me show you, we, we have what we call our new donated item wizard. And what's good about this is for the scenario where they're giving you a donation that you want to directly auction off, we do make it easy to make that happen. So let's say someone's giving you an autographed baseball jersey. and it's worth a hundred dollars one item you can keep track of who actually procured it for you you can write up a a nice description autographed by Joe Schmo and what we have is this create auction item section down here where if it's a single item in the donation you want to sell that directly you can just click this box and will automatically create the auction item for you for that single item. So here we look at an auction item. You're able to specify like what category that item is in and your system administrator can 
uh, modify these categories. We have uh, auction groups to keep track of, you know, silent auction rounds or live rounds. And uh, your, once again, your system administrator can customize that. We can keep track of like minimum bids. Uh, for silent items, you may also have like a guaranteed bid that you can list. Uh, if there's any special donor recognition that you want to put on the item or in the booklet, uh, you can keep track of, of it here. Similarly with any restrictions. And we're just going to give this a uh, number. Save that item. So now let's look at our auction items tab. So this shows all of the items that we're going to sell. So for example, here is a Blu-ray DVD player that we're going to sell. And here is a wine and cheese basket. If I look at this one, you can see that it's actually made up of multiple donated items that we track in these things called auction item pieces. And you can see that we know how many of each item uh, is going into this basket and the system will automatically calculate the fair market value uh, for us so we don't have to do that though you're able to override it if you need it. And if you're putting together these baskets we make it really easy to add new items because we will show you what are the donated items that are available uh, and how many are left and what their value is of each. So let's say we wanted to add another block of cheese in there. We could do that and the system will automatically track that. The other type of donated item, or excuse me, auction item I want to show you is uh, your typical pure gift that you might have at your auction, the, the raise the paddle bid. And so you're able to create items like that that um, don't actually give anyone anything. And you're able to track this by uh, telling us to treat the purchase as a gift. And this will tell us that uh, based off custom settings, uh, we can create an opportunity of, let's say, a gift or a donation rather than an auction item purchase. Now let's look at auction tickets. Tickets are stored as opportunities with a, an auction record type. And if we look at an auction ticket, you'll see that we've got fields uh, that you're able to actually customize this uh, using field sets. And uh, for tickets, we're able to track them against either uh, contact or in version 3.0, we now also support tracking tickets purchased by organizations, like if your company is sponsoring a table. You're able to tell us how many tickets they're purchasing, and then we create for you these records that allow, allow us to track uh, the guests. And you can do them all up front or over time. You can fill them in. And these are the actual campaign member records that we're storing on the attendees campaign. And we've got a bunch of different fields to track information about your guests, like the status of, uh, you know, they've been invited, they, they're coming or not coming, whether they've checked in at the night of the auction. Uh, we have a bid number that we associate with each uh, attendee, and I'll show you a way to automatically create those. Uh, meal preference you can keep track of and this is another list that you can customize um, and you're able to keep track of like who are the table captains and uh, their table numbers that uh, your guests will be at. So instead of manually assigning all those bid numbers let's say the the day before the auction you can run our wizard here called the auto assign bid number and what it will do is go through and sequentially give a uh, a unique number to each of the attendees. And our system defaultly guarantees or enforces that each bid number is unique within the auction, but we also now have in version 3 a setting so that you can turn off that behavior if you uh, don't desire it. So now we're going to look at our auction purchases tab. Here we see all of the purchases that occurred at the auction and once again these are another type of opportunity. If we look at one, you can see that we're tracking uh, how much the person paid and bringing over what is the uh, fair market value of the item and how much is thus deductible and which item it was. And we've also created a wizard to make it uh, 
quick to enter in a bunch of purchases at once and you can do it just by doing uh, like bid numbers so you're not having to uh, spell out people's full names and you can also uh, enter the goods by their ID and just put in an amount. Uh, the paid flag tells us uh, what stage you want us to create this opportunity, whether it's something that's just pledged and they haven't yet paid for, or whether you've already charged them and it should be a closed one. Now let's look at our new check-in feature. This is a tab we've added for version 3.0 and it's to be used the night of the auction to handle people showing up and getting their information. So let's say a guest shows up, you would just enter their name in, the system will help you find them. And if they're already assigned to a table, you'll see their information. Here are their contact fields that you're able to actually control using field sets. If uh, you don't have all of their information, you can get it right now and, you know, update it. Uh, similarly, you know, keep track of their uh, campaign member choices. Um, and then you can check that person in. And now the system knows that they've been checked in. If someone new shows up who's not yet there in your system, let's say uh, Johnny Doe, system looks them up, we don't see that there's a person here by that name, you're able to assign them to a table. Let's say they say, oh, I'm sitting with the Acme table. That's who I work for. We can put them here. You can enter their information right then and there, what they're going to have, um, and uh, save their information, and you'll see we've added them to this table. Another neat feature we've added with this is we're now working with uh, several credit card processors to help make uh, it smoother. So if you have uh, Click and Pledge installed in your Salesforce instance, you can configure this page so that you're able at check-in to save their credit card information. And this takes just a sec for the payment processor to load. And here it displays the information where you would be able to fill out their credit card information and you would be saving it uh, at click and pledge associated with that contact. We also now provide a report that shows you all the people who have checked in and those who haven't. And that's useful if you're trying to figure out the night of the event, who have you still not gotten, let's say, a payment information from. Let me also show you on this system, uh, we've integrated with uh, IATS Brickwork. And so in Brickwork, here we go. It brings up the information about the contact. Uh, and here you're able to put in their payment information. I've already saved a credit card, which you could uh, edit at that time. Save that information. Now let's look at our checkout tab. Checkout is another new feature in version 3.0 and this is to be used the night of when people are checking out or if during the evening people want to know how much they've uh, currently purchased. So you're able to look up a guest either by their name or just by entering their bid number and we'll display all of their gifts uh, and purchases and tickets. Based off the stage we'll default to which ones uh, they would need to pay now and we'll give you a, a subtotal here. And if you've got a credit card processor hooked up, then you're able to actually charge a card. So if you were using Click and Pledge, we would load up their credit card information, uh, display it here, and I don't have it for this, for this guest, and you would be able to process the payment. On this other system, let me show you another integration with uh, IATS Brickwork. We pick our guests, we see what we're going to charge them for, you can control this, check or uncheck, and here we're bringing up IATS Brickwork, and we've got their saved information, and we can process it, and uh, there we've saved. After you've charged their credit card, then you can easily update the opportunities by, uh, you've got the ones checked off that you want to modify, and you can pick their new status, let's say close one, and just click this update button and you're done. The other thing we provide from the checkout uh, tab is a way to quickly view a receipt on that specific guest. And uh, here is our PDF that we 
create that shows all of their purchases and the fair market value. And in version 3.0, we've made the auction receipts uh, more customizable. So you're able to customize what fields are displayed in this table using a field set. And you're also able to customize the, the introductory text and the uh, footer text uh, that's appropriate for your organization for that auction. And uh, it's actually a, an HTML field, so you can put in uh, a little bit of formatting to, to make it look a little bit nicer. You can also get at auction receipts from their own tab, uh, just like before, and we've added some improvements. So you can once again uh, now do it by typing their bid number uh, or just including all guests. Um, and you can decide whether you want ticket purchases or not, and we'll create the PDF. And so this way you can do it uh, either after the event if you're going to mail out receipts to everyone or the night of, you would probably do them one at a time. Also in this version, we have added a conga word email mail merge template. Uh, for those of you that use conga composer, we've got uh, a, a sample conga template that you can use for doing auction receipts uh, if what we offer isn't customizable enough. Here's a, an example of that output to see what it would look like uh, if you were using Conga with our template, which you can modify. Now we're looking at the uh, reports tab, and in the auction management folder, we've got a set of reports uh, we ship with auctions for Salesforce. There's 14 of them. Um, you know, they're reports to get lists of attendees and table captains and purchases. We've added a few new reports in this version, like one for reconciliation. Uh, this is useful uh, the next day after an auction to review all the purchases by person that got entered in your system. Uh, this is useful if let's say you're using volunteers to do all the data entry, you could easily make sure everything looked okay and there weren't any mistakes. And uh, if there were mistakes, you could quickly uh, visit those opportunities to fix them up uh, right from this report. Finally, I'd like to show our About tab that has uh, useful links for auctions. We've got links to our website that has installation configuration guide, a user's guide, frequently asked questions. We also have links to the uh, nonprofit Salesforce Practitioners Google group that we monitor where uh, you're free to uh, ask questions there and other users of auctions are also on that list and can help answer those questions. And um, finally, if uh, you like the product uh, and you've installed it and it's working well for you, we'd love to have you write a nice review on the App Exchange. Uh, it's been out for about two years now. We've got over 160 organizations that have installed auctions and uh, multiple of those groups have used it uh, f for several years now and are having success with it. And I think that's all, so thanks a lot. Bye.